Hello and welcome to this tutorial on wildcard masks and access lists. So an access list can match based on the IP address of a packet. A standard access list will only look at the source IP address of the packet and an extended access list will look not only at the source IP address but also the destination IP address. So we use a wildcard mask in order to tell the router which IP addresses to look at. In other words, should it just pay attention to one? Should it look at a small range like a subnet? Or should it look at a very large range, many IPs? Now, wildcard masks are used in both standard access lists and extended access lists. So they apply to both. Now, wildcard masks are made up of ones and zeros and they look a little bit like a subnet mask but they're very different so try not to confuse the two when you see a zero in a wildcard mask that means that the corresponding bits in the IP address we're looking at like the source or destination IP address in a packet those have to match what we have configured in the access list okay so a zero means it has to match if you see a one that means that the corresponding bits in the packet do not have to match what we have configured in the access list. All right, so zeros match and ones we don't care about. They don't have to match. Let's take a look at a few examples. In this wildcard mask, we have zeros in the first three octets, and then we have all ones in the last octet. So you can see we're getting back to binary here. What this means is whatever IP address we're looking at in our packet, the first three octets would have to be an exact match. The last octet could, could be anything. We don't really care about it because it's all ones. Here's another example. Our wildcard mask is made up of all zeros. That means if our packet has the IP address of 10.10.10.1, for example, then every single one of these octets would have to match whatever source we're listing in our access list because this wildcard mask is saying each octet has to be an exact match. Now we didn't list the source here in the access list but normally it would list an IP address. Let's take a look at, at another example. Here this one's a bit more complicated. Whatever IP address we have configured in the access list we're going to say that the first two octets have to match whatever is in our packet because those are all zeros. Now the third octet gets a little bit different. This in binary looks like this. So the first three bits would have to match but the last five do not. And then since our last octet here is made up of all ones that entire octet doesn't have to match. We don't really care about what's in there. So you can see this gets a little bit complicated and knowledge of binary and IP addressing is absolutely required in order to make sense of these. Luckily, we have a few shortcuts to easily make sense of wildcard masks. Just like all of the little tips and tricks we went over in IP addressing and subnetting, well, we have a few here that'll make all that binary talk a little bit easier to get through. So first we're going to look at how do we determine a wildcard mask. And this is really useful if you need to create an access list. So the trick is, if you have a subnet mask, you need to subtract it from 255, 255, 255, 255, all ones. Let's take an example, and this will make sense. Let's say we're going to craft an access list, and one of the statements, we need to convert this subnet mask into a wildcard mask. Well, let's subtract our subnet mask from this value here. And we'll do it on each octet. So if we look at the first one, if you subtract 255 from 255, we get 0. Then move on to the next subnet, uh, sorry, octet, and we get the same thing, another 0. Do the same thing for this one, and this time it's 254. Subtracted from 255, we get 1. And then this time in the last octet, we're not subtracting anything. So we just have 255. So that now is our wildcard mask that we could use to configure an access list. Let's do another example. Here the subnet mask is a slash 28. 
0.240 in the last octet. Well, we can do this one a bit faster now. The first three are all 255s, so we know that the first three octets are going to be 0 0.0, .0 because these are all 255s. The last octet turns out to be 15. So our wildcard mask is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.15. Likewise, we have a trick in order to easily understand or interpret a wildcard mask that's already configured in an access list. And it's very simple. It's the same rule that we just looked at, but now we're changing things. Now we're starting with a wildcard and we want to figure out a subnet mask. Because remember, oftentimes an access list will reference one or many IPs. So we're dealing with subnet masks. Let's take a look at this example. If this is our wildcard mask, let's just subtract this from this value in order to figure out what subnet mask we're talking about. And then we can easily determine the range of IPs that are affected by this access list. So quite simply, we would get 0 from 255 equals 255. We do the same thing for the next octet, 0 again. This time, 15 minus 255 equals 240 and then last we get 0. So this is the subnet mask that we would be uh, applying to our source IP in order to figure out that range and as you can see it's a large range. Let's do another example. This time we'll run through the subtraction again. Well we're subtracting 0 from 255 for er each of the first three octets so we're going to get 255.255.255 and then we take 31 away from 255 and that gives us 224. So here's our subnet mask which equals a slash 27. So now we can go ahead and more easily understand the range of IPs that this wildcard mask is talking about. Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We now know that a wildcard mask is used to identify IPs, whether it's a single IP address or a range, like a subnet. A wildcard mask will use ones and zeros, and a zero means that the value in the IP address has to match, those bits have to match. A one means that the corresponding bits do not have to match. Now, wildcard masks are used in both standard and extended access lists, and a simple way to determine either the wildcard mask from a known subnet mask or the other direction, if you have a wildcard mask and you need to figure out what subnet mask it's talking about, we subtract either value from all ones, the 255s, and we'll figure out the other value. Okay, so that's it. These are easy to practice. You can take any IP address subnet mask and convert it to a wildcard mask. And likewise, just create some random uh, uh, wildcard masks and then use this formula to create some subnet masks. After you do a few, you'll be pretty comfortable with it. And this is really important because when we move on now to actually configuring the access list, both standard and extended, we're going to have to be able to create and interpret these relatively quickly. Okay, so that's it. That is wildcard masks and access lists. Thanks for watching.